And now, for the thrilling conclusion of the DX Commander Nebula build. See, I did that just for Mike, KMRD. <laughs> I hope that if you do get a DX Commander Nebula, that this video or this set of videos is uh, helpful to you. Let's check it out. Okay, so let's talk about what I would do different if I had to do this all over. The initial instructions showed these wing nuts down. Yes, I have flipped over the bolts and the wing nuts so that they're up way easier to manage this way. In addition to that, as you can see, these are very tight right now. When I initially laid out the field of radials, I had these connected, I pulled the wire, I pinned it out, and then, you know, did my testing and eventually I pinned everything down with uh, these yard stakes and barely, there we go. However, I didn't leave enough slack on them. So these things are very, very snug right now. One of the things that I may do is I may make little pigtails to extend these so that if I have to do any maintenance on this thing, it's a whole lot easier to put these up and take down. So if I were to lay out the entire field of radials again, I would absolutely leave more slack on these on the plate connection side. When I've had to take the antenna down to do tuning, it has been you know, quite the shuffle just to make sure that the mast ends up exactly back at the original place so that I have a hope and a prayer of getting everything connected. That one, absolutely on me. On the kit itself, I understand why Cal uses the same exact fork connector on all of these things. Listen, it's one skew instead of two. It's one part instead of two parts. Why complicate the kit? With that said, if I had to do it all over again, and I think I'm going to do it for when I build my expedition, they make these connectors with a pre-built in 90 degree. I'm gonna buy some and see if the clearance on them is enough that the wing nuts will go around them. And if so, when I do my expedition, I'm gonna use that instead of the fork connectors that come with this because I don't like the tension that is on here. I know it's not a lot of tension. It's the tension that I put on it based on the instructions. However, it's just a little bit of peace of mind for my end. The other thing that I've done differently from the instructions is that I put these, uh, instead of going straight out like there, for the most part, I have offset these towards the inside. When I was setting this thing up initially, I, I put it up and took it down a number of times and this element ended up breaking right here and it didn't show because the heat shrink is so stinking strong that it looked whole. I actually had to come and look at it and when I took it apart, sure enough, it was broken. I have angled these in so that if I take this down, I don't have to take down the element before taking down the antenna mast. It's a little thing, but it, it adds up, right? I have also left in and, jack and pounded in the tent stakes that I used to make the hinge plate. I'm not currently using these tent stakes for anything and neither am I using these, this rope. For the sake of the next time I have to hinge it down and hinge it up, I left it in place. I don't have any problem leaving these out. If any, if I need to use these tent stakes later on, I'll pull them up and I'll still leave the rope in there because it's just a little couple of feet of rope. I can find more rope. I haven't taken this off from the last weekend when I took the mast down to replace the top spreader. Uh, Loki saw the video and saw that he had sent me the wrong top spreader, although I don't think there's any real physical difference between the spreader and the nebula. Just They all have the same round shape and they all have holes for all the elements even though you don't need the all the elements at the very top for example i i compared the two-way spreader to the spreader he sent me and there's a minimal amount of difference between it and the one he sent me but he sent it to me so i went ahead and installed it i haven't taken this rope down this rope is set up on it's around the mast on the second plate and not entangled on the elements at all so that it comes off clean. It comes it's in between two elements and all I have to do is pull it. I haven't pulled it because I'm wait, I have to send Cal a message about the problem I'm having with 80 and 10 and I haven't gotten around to it. And since taking it down is so much easier with that thing tensioned over there, well, of course, I'm not going to take it down. The last thing I would do that I would change here is that I would bury in some conduit for my coax. I have berry rated co coax out here, outdoor rated coax out here, not a problem, but I'm having to move it back and forth every time I mow. I've mowed a couple of times, as you can see, I, you know, I'm having to shuffle it and there's a patch there that doesn't get mowed because it just gets too close to the connector. I would change that. The last thing I would change, uh, and this is an important one because it will matter over time, is as you can see, 
the last time I mowed, I went over the end of one of the radials and shredded it. I, it took, uh, I don't know, probably four feet off it all uh, at the end. What I should be doing, and I'm going to do to the rest of these uh, radials, is I'm going to double pin them at the end. What happened was the earth was really soft. Uh, the dirt was really soft when I pinned them in, and it has dried up a little bit. And that flexed the, the dirt enough that they came up. I didn't realize it, and when I was mowing last weekend, I did that to a couple elements. This is the one that got it the worst. It's not a huge deal. Overall, I don't want to do that ever again. So I'm going to double pin all of the elements. I'm going to add a second pin at the end of them just to make sure that if the first one slips out, the second one catches it. Another possible change I may make is I may make use of this to put a 10 meter dedicated element on here. I'm not sure if I'll make it a quarter wave. I may make it 5 eighths. It's worth experimenting. It's there. It's not that difficult to put the mask down and put it back up. Why not test? Part of this hobby is experimentation and trying to figure out what works best for us. You know what? I have the opportunity without damaging anything else. I'm very likely going to do that this fall. As you can see, I'm using the figure nine carabiner to hold my guy lines. The only other thing that I may do is I may replace these guy lines with this thickness guy uh, line only because it just they just they don't tension up very well and yes they have taken already some nasty winds here we had a, a weekend where we were getting gusts of 60 and 70 miles an hour and a tornado went by not so far yeah you know what the mast is still up and it didn't budge it was perfectly fine. It swayed it the way it needed to sway. But my brain is telling me that I would feel a whole lot better if I had thicker guy ropes. So uh, I'm, part of what I'm thinking about doing is getting a spool of this just dedicated to making some guy ropes for it. Uh, I, I don't think I will use the night line on anything but the top element. If, if, I, you know, if I go down that road, I'll probably use night line on here and then leave the center ones regular rope because the, the night line is twice as expensive. All right, gang, that's it. That's the Nebula build. I'm done with it. Am I gonna continue to tweak with it? You bet. But for now, that's the build series. I hope it's useful to you guys. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next, next time, 7-3.